What's going on guys, Real Touch GML here from CodyMadeSimple.com and today what I'm going to be showing you how to do is a perfect collision system, a four-way collision system in Java. So here's what it basically looks like. So we have a full-on um, collision system on all four sides. I have tested the, the living hell out of this and I have not been able to find any glitch. Uh, whatsoever of it teleporting through walls or something like that, right? So if you guys are familiar with my wizard uh, Java game development course on coding made simple then You'll notice that I put in a collision system on that course uh, But the collision system was a little bit buggy um, and this just fixes all of that up for you so right off the bat, I'm not going to show you guys how to create the actual engine itself. Um, I do have other tutorials that you can find in the description that will run you step by step how to create the engine where you can create game objects um, and, and uh, just basically have yourself set up so that you can create a collision system like this. All right, so before we hop into the code, here's a little demonstration so you can visually see what's happening here. So when we go left and right, as you can see, there's this red bounty box that comes out. And when we go up and down, there's a blue bounty box. So this collision system uses two bounty boxes. And as you can see, if we go diagonally, um, it, <coughs> it shows off both of them. So now these bounty boxes are controlled by its velocity X and its velocity Y. So if you're familiar with the engine that I'm using here, you'll know what velocity X and velocity Y is, but it's just basically like a horizontal speed and a vertical speed. So once this comes in collision, then we know to um, stop it and that it's a horizontal collision. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the code here. Here I'm in the player class, and I just wanna show you that I have two variables up here, which is ACC and DCC, which stands for acceleration and deceleration. So when I hit the up key, for instance, we're gonna be accelerating at one, uh, and that goes up to a five max, as you can see with the clamp here. Um, and then it's going to decelerate at 0 0.5. Okay, so this is gonna be important when we're setting up how the bounds actually uh, get constructed. So when you're moving to the right-hand side, it come, that, that bounding box comes out to the right just a little bit. We don't want it to come out too much. So if you have different values here, or if you're just using just a strict, if you hit the right key, it automatically goes to, let's say, a five horizontal speed or velocity X. Um, then you might have to play around with the values that we're going to be setting up here, um, but I'm sure you, I'm sure you can handle it. All right. <clears throat> so as you'll notice, we have two public rectangle get bound methods. Um, this is for the horizontal collision, and this is going to be for the vertical collision. And then down here, this is where I was drawing that rectangle. So this collision system uses a dot intersects uh, method, which is ingrained in the rectangle class. So if it sounds confusing right now, don't worry, we're gonna go through the code step by step and uh, hopefully answer all your questions that you may have. So just for now, I'm going to comment this out. And if you would like to draw your rectangles, you have to make sure if you're using the graphics G class that you convert that into a graphics 2D class. You can't draw normal rectangles with just the graphics G. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is create our first rectangle. So again, this is going to be the horizontal collision, the rectangle that gets left and right collisions. So we need to set up the rectangle to move with our player. So we're gonna set up four new variables here. They're going to be floats. Now, when you're returning a new rectangle, it has to be an integer value. The only reason I'm making it a float is because this is what I've done, I, I made the X value and the Y value floats and I made the acceleration and deceleration. So I'm just going to keep it the same at, with the float. When we return the new rectangle, it, we have to cast it to an integer anyways. So if you're using integers in your game, um, then just make it an integer in, instead of a float. All right, so it's going to be BX, we're just gonna equal to X, float BY equals Y, and B stands for box, float uh, BW stands for box width, is going to equal 32 and bh equals 32. Okay, so now if we just return a new rectangle and we say bx, by, bw, and bh, as you can see, we're getting that error because we have to cast it to integers. So in parentheses, I'm just gonna put int in front of all these values. And there we go. So now if we draw 
Let's uncomment this. And if we draw it now, we're actually not going to see any difference, right? So we're not going to get that because we haven't actually um, set it so that when we go left and right, that the box extends. So that's what we're going to do right now. So super simple. We're just going to say on our BX equals X plus our velocity X. And then in our width, is going to equal 32 plus our velocity x divided by 2. So as you can see, now we're getting that cool, um, the, the rectangle itself is shifting with our velocity. If we didn't put this divided by 2, as you can see, one extends a lot farther than the other. So I just divided it by 2. Now this is what I was telling you guys about playing with the values because if you have a different speed or if your, your width and height of your actual box or your player is going to be bigger, then you might need to play around with these values, but I'm sure you guys can figure that out. Okay, so I'm just gonna focus on the horizontal collision to start with. So in our tick method up here, which is just basically an update method, I'm going to call a new method. Technically, you could just put it inside the tick, but I like to organize it a little bit better. So I'm gonna say private void collision. Okay, and here what we need to do is find our block and see if it's intersecting. So just a very basic collision system setup. So I'm gonna create a for loop int i equals zero. i is less than handler dot object dot size i plus plus. Okay, and this handler dot object dot size, this is the handler class right here. Um, so basically what this is going to do, what the handler class does itself is just updates and runs through every object in the game. If you're familiar with the Let's Build a Game series or the Zombie Game series that has two parts to it, uh, we started building this engine. So again, if you're confused and you want to go ahead and use this engine, then uh, there will be a link in the description. So the entire point of just running through this list is to find the object that we want to collide with. So I'm going to create a new game object or a temporary game object called temp object. And this is going to equal handler dot object dot get i so when we're running through this for loop this temp object is going to pretty much just get every object in the game and put it inside this temporary object so it's going to continue to loop through it constantly so then we want to see if our temp object equals our block so if temp object dot get id equals id dot block then we know that we're in the block. So then we can just start running the collision. So if get bounds dot intersects with temp object dot get bounds, then we know we're intersecting. So we can just simply say system dot out dot print line um, colliding. And if we run the game, As you can see down on the console, we're colliding. When we get out of it, we're not colliding anymore. So it's also good to note that in our game object here, which is an abstract class, which every class extends this game object, that, that's an actual object in the game. So our player and our block, which are the only two objects we have in the game right now, they both extend game objects. And inside this game object class, we have getters and setters for the velocity x, uh, getting the X position and then also getting the ID and uh, getting the width and height Which is where is that right here, so get W and get H which is just um, Just another float which stands for width and height So in our block here as you can see we set the width to 200 and the height to 200 So we're gonna be using that right now so in our get bounds, we're just gonna say if our velocity x is greater than zero, then do this. Else if velocity x is less than zero, then do this. So basically we're saying, are we going to the right side? Or are we going to the left side? So if we're going to the right, then we want to set our velocity x to equal zero. And then we're just gonna set our x to equal temp object dot get x minus 32. So if we run the game now, as you can see, it now stops um, and our left side has no collision yet, just yet.
Okay, so we can do the same thing for if we're going to the left. So we'll set velocity x to equal zero, and then we'll set x to equal temp object dot get x plus our temp object dot get w. So get width. So this is just going to set our x to whatever the x position of our block is plus the width. So we do that now. Then we do that. Okay. So I mean that's basically it. So let's go ahead and do our vertical collision now. So again, pretty much the same thing. We're gonna set four more variables. Float bx equals x, float by equals y plus our velocity y. Our bw equals um, 32, and then our bh equals 32 plus velocity y divided by two. Same thing, except we're just doing it on the y-axis now. So we'll return a new rectangle. Um, this is gonna be bx, by, bw, and bh. And then we'll convert all of these to an int. All right, so now I can just basically copy this, which there's the bracket right there. Pop it down here. And then get bounds two dot intersects and then just change this to velocity y, velocity y, change that to y, change this to y, change that. and then our height as well. And this would be um, the down collision, and this would be the up collision. So now we do that. And as you can see, we have the collision system working. So this doesn't work if this object is moving, which if you guys want, I can do um, another tutorial on how you can intersect with moving items in your game. So if you wanted platforms or if you wanted these blocks to move back and forth, then that object would actually slide with it uh, or like push it out of the way or, um, you know, just how it would normally interact. So that's going to be it. Go leave a like, go and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something and uh, have fun. Peace.